me and friends of mine, we go downtown to the Lowndes Street Mall and we get them winos, the old drunks down there to go in there and get us a uh, grain alcohol. And this is back when grain was grain, you know, uh, 200 some proof or something like that. Mm. I don't know. It was high. But they go in there and get us uh, pints of them. We go up 7-Eleven, get them jugs of, uh, you know, make ooby doobie mm -hmm. and just walk around. We'd all have our own jug. By the time we got done chugging that, we was drunk. And next thing I know, I was going somewhere where my friends were at, and there was a course up in Highland. The keys were in it. It's cold. But I jumped up in there, started it up, warmed it up, right in front of the people's house. Big station wagon. <laughs> I must have hit 11 cores before I got off Highland. How old were you? I was like 15 or 16. And Highland's a tight street. like that's. Oh, what, God, yeah. yeah like, why do like, you think I hit all the cores? Right, like, plus, like, I didn't have a drive. Plus, yeah. I was drunk. <laughs> Ah, welcome back. And today we speak with local legend Larry Holiday. Okay, I've known this guy for a few years. I love to just sit back and kick it. We just kick it and laugh and joke and have a good time, which is mostly what this episode is about. But also this episode is about loss. It's about life and death. Larry recently lost his wife of 16 years, his best friend, his wife. Um, he also lost his son and he also lost his dog. He recently lost his house. So how does someone deal with all these things, man? How do you deal with losing so much and get up and go to work every day and still take care of the things that you take care of? This is a struggle that Larry's definitely dealing with. This is a struggle for anyone, man, and death is like the most certain thing in life, right? You're guaranteed death. The longer you live, the more people you see die. This can be a blessing and a curse. Let's get into this episode of Chopping It Up. Hey, hey, <laughs> how you doing? Uh, Sliding in, getting comfortable, figuring it out. Okay. See if you had a headphones um, on, you could hear your voice. So today we're talking with Larry Holiday. As you can see, he's pretty crazy. <laughs> but uh, but uh, he opted out of the headphones today. We're cooling. We're cooling. He had to have his cup. He was not happy until he had a handled cup. So here we are with his handled cup. Like this that. man is a legend in Winchester. Simple fact. So what's up, man? Introduce yourself. Tell everybody who we're talking to. I'm not doing that. You don't need to know my name and shit. You already told them my name is Larry. Okay. And they see it on the thing. We're not doing that. Okay, Larry Holiday. Come at me another way. Where are you from? Right here, baby. Born and raised. Winchester, On Virginia. the playgrounds where I spent most of my days. <laughs> <laughs> so it's apple blossom. I really want I really want to get this uh piece down that I really like. Eminem. No, it's uh and you can help me with it. Okay. Uh not help me, but help me figure this out All real right. fast. <sighs> Kid Rock. Okay. That was a song, uh um something about I'm the only cool loop left in this town. Come on, help me out with the song. I've been sitting here. No. Trying to. No, find no, stop myself. it. You're running this. You're running this. <laughs> is that this. the one? Is that the one? No. I'm the only cool loop left in this town. Uh, uh, something about John Wayne. I want to know that verse. You just fucked that all the way up. Help You'll come back to it. you later. I want it now. I don't know nothing about it. Give me your phone. Hold on. I got my tablet right here. Right, thank you. I'm going to find it. Yes. We're going to find it. I like to hear that little verse there. It makes me happy. Mm, makes you happy. So he likes you, being happy. Slappy so pappy. Special, His a... slappy happy pappy. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for my friends, guys. These are my friends, but. Larry's a good him. guy, but we watch out for Earl. Yeah, yeah, right. We was talking about Earl earlier. Who is Earl? Earl is the other part of me. Uh, I'm a man. That's torn between two worlds, okay? Okay. I don't want to be here, and I do want to be here. I want to be there, but I'm going to miss the ones that live here. You can't have them both like that. It's just, never mind, bitch. Can't say that. Yeah, right. Watch your language, Okay, I, I just want to say right. Show. Okay, I just want to say right from the beginning, Jamie told me there was a few things I wasn't allowed to say on air. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just hell, fuck, motherfucking, sucking dick, ass, mother. I can't say that. I like you for you to record that and just save it for me and you just to send it to me once in a while. <laughs> Thank you for me up with that. I got you. You don't mind. I got you. I see you throw me a bone. I throw you I a got bone. You. That's awesome. It's working out pretty it's good. Be a whole lot of cuckoo you know, clocks. Right now, Earl's laying down taking a nap. Larry's talking to you. This is Larry. All right. So we're yes, talking sir. to Larry right now. Yes. Sir. So do you know the name of the song? 
Well, no, that's why I was. Well, then I can't play it because for real, yeah, it's copyright. All right, cool loop left in this. Wow. Wow. It's rapping. I you know. You wanted that. to start with a rap though. So what if I give you a beat? No, it was that part. I know. Oh, um. <laughs> Which one do you want? Which one do you want? All right. Hey, you're the time talk of the neighborhood. And every time I see you're up to no good. You're just like a snake crawling on the ground. Looking for some new dirt to spread around. Then you stick out your tongue and start spreading lies. And then somebody else has been victimized. They stop for a while, then they add it again. And you always got to have the last word in. Call your mouth almighty. Talk everlasting. You ain't satisfied unless something's happening. You don't have to be there no more than a minute. But you always got to have your two cents in it. So for all you Big Mouse, this stands for you. Something else you can run and go tell your crew. Because we made it be big so we can rock the house. But we also made it big enough to fit in your mouth. <laughs> you haven't yet? <laughs> Fucking classic. Yeah. Classic. We just beatboxed and rapped. Yeah. Until I just couldn't take it no more. And I just couldn't do it. I had to stop. Can we do that? <laughs> that was pretty cool, man. But can we do it again? I think that's going to be awesome. Record yeah. it just let's, for us. Let's, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll send I like you, to have a couple little I'll send you a couple little shorts. Yeah, this okay, is, you want to do that one now? This was going to be great. No, we, there, I'll, I'll take care of all that in post. But you ain't recorded it yet. I'm recording everything right now. You recording this now? I've been recording. Son of a bitch, if I'd known that, I would have said son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me double check everything because I have been known to make serious mistakes. Oh my right God, now. here we go. Oh, see? Okay, but we're looking good. We're looking good, Eric. Looking good, all right? We're good. All right, yeah, I'm ready. We've been recording for the last six minutes. I didn't want that song, though. I just like that verse. It's like, uh, God, I wish I could remember it. Uh, Something about John Wayne and being the only cool loop left in this town. Was it Cool Loop or Cool Luke? Not even for sure. Cool Luke ate a lot of eggs. Remember that movie? All right, bypass it. Let's go. You're going to run the whole damn thing right, without, so the, you, without okay, the Okay, Larry so Holiday's in the house. All right. Larry Holiday, not Earl. Love that guy. That was an awesome rap, Larry. Okay. So you're an OG gangster from Winchester. Right now it's Apple Blossom time. Tell me some things you would have been doing when you was younger in Apple Blossom times. Well, I was born and raised in this town, and me and all my friends got together. And Pull that mic into you. Please, sir. Don't raise your voice at me. On, uh, on in there. On in there. Oh, man, here we go. Yeah, man. There we go. All right. Anyway, back back when I was young, you know, it'd be about 50 of us. You know, all my friends, all my buddies. We'd go downtown, get drunk, all around, carry on, just have a blast. Apple Blossom, man. Because one time a year, man, you got to have some fun. Absolutely. Yeah, everybody's out. Yeah, you got to Blossom now? What's that? Do you go to Apple Blossom now? No. You're going to go over and get some funnel cake, though. I'm going to go get some funnel cake yeah, for my yeah. daughter, but I ain't, I ain't participating. So tell me about growing up. You grow up. How's it growing up in Winchester? Well, I'll tell you, you this. Using drugs, partying, drinking. What do y'all start doing for fun? Everything. All of the above. Where's the start for Larry? Uh, up on Highland. I mean, we, we all hung around up on Highland and carried on up there, played football. I mean, it was a normal childhood, you know, different than today for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, I remember carrying on, get, starting to get in trouble. And then, of course, I ended up going up the road for two and a half years. All my friends are back home. You know, I'm locked up for two and a half years. Man, I did it all. I couldn't even remember. I remember waking up in the courtroom as a juvenile, still drunk, mm. and cussed the judge and everything. I don't even remember what my damn charges was. Just wilding out. Oh, man, it was nuts. I get up there to, back then, they had RDC, uh, right behind detention, you know, stand detention, Beaumont, Hanover, Barrett. Now they don't have none of them facilities anymore. None of them's around anymore. And, buddy, I thought that that was the worst thing that ever happened to me in my life, being locked up away from family and friends, two and a half years, no letters, no visits, nothing, you know. And how old are you? are talking about juvenile facilities, yeah, I'm right? I'm juvenile. They're yeah. all juvenile yes. facilities yes. you were just naming off. And, and they are, they was, to me, they was way tougher than any jail I've been in today. You know, I mean, you get up there, you got a bunch of young punks, and all they want to do is fight. Right. And get into, I spent a lot of time locked down in there. You know, because I was all, I didn't take no shit, you know. 
Somebody punks you, you got to be able to punk them back mm -hmm. real quick, mm -hmm. or you're going to play that game the rest of the time you're in there. So you feel like yeah. it turns you into a little gangster, turn you into a little savage. I learned a lot. I learned how to take care of my hygiene, learn how to make my mm, bed, okay. get up early in the morning, you know, do something during the day, you know, be a man, you know, because like, like today, these kids lay around all day and, you know, they, you got to go out there and get your hands dirty. You got to do something. I got respect for the working man, you know what I mean? Because I yeah. am the working man. Fuck yeah. You know? I did when I was younger. I did when I was younger. Uh, I didn't understand it, but I think after you work a while, you understand it, and you understand yeah. the value behind it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, then you understand the, uh, the value of a dollar. For sure. You know, because it's a handed to you. Yeah. Everybody gives you something, then all you're going to do is go back to get more given to you. Yeah, right. right. Right, for sure. So you don't even know what you got locked up for the two years? I don't. I but don't. This is still juvenile. This is pre-18. I was on probation. Um, I've done some crazy shit, man. I stole a car. We, me and friends of mine, we got a, uh, we go downtown to the Lowndes Street Mall, and we get them winos, the old drunks down there, to go in there and get us uh, grain alcohol. And this is back when grain was grain. You know, uh, what was 200-some proof or something like that? Mm. I don't know. It was high. But they go in there and get us uh, pints of them. We go up 7-Eleven, get them jugs of, uh, you know, make ooby Doobie mm -hmm. and just walk around. We'd all have our own jug. We, by the time we got done chugging that, we was drunk. And the next thing I know, I was going somewhere where my friends were at, and there was a car sitting on Highland. The keys were in it. It was cold. Shit, I jumped up in there and uh, started it up, warmed it up, right in front of people's house. Big station wagon. <laughs> I must have hit 11 cars before I got off Highland. How old were you? I was like, hmm. Oh, God. Maybe 15 or 16. And Highland's a tight street. Like that's Oh, what, God, yeah. yeah like, why do like, you think I hit all the cars? Right, like, Plus, like, I didn't yeah. know how to drive. Plus, yeah. I was drunk. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, was I, just parked, I went around the corner. Everybody was looking at me. It's broad daylight. I just parked it up on the sidewalk and walked uh, about a block up and went to my friend's house. And they come out and bust you for it? No, I never, never got, got caught for that, for that one. one. Nah, probably get me now. Right? <laughs> nah. Right, nah. so y'all was big into fighting and shit like that, too? Everybody you run around with, that was like the thing, right? Well, there was nothing else to do. We Beat didn't have chest. cell phones. Uh, right. You know, uh, it was a sport. I mean, just something to do. You know, we didn't have all the things kids got to today, you know? How about drugs? Oh, it was everywhere, especially like being on Highland. What was you using? How was, like, how was you getting I your do, dope? I'd do any damn thing at the time. i never done heroin, and I never shot a needle. I never wanted to go that route. Okay. You know, I mean, damn, if I got to get high that bad, fuck, I got a problem. You know, I'm just not into needles, you know? I don't fucking want the shit around me. And I know you told me to watch my mouth, and here I am cussing. That's all right. I mean... Keep it real. Well, stay me in the corner. Keep, don't get Earl out, man. Uh, sorry, That's all sorry, I want to do. That. I just want to make sure Earl uh, don't. Okay. Uh, we'll leave him alone. Don't come out and start crashing my monkeys off the wall. Or <laughs> that would be terrible. Watch him. Larry's a nice guy, though. So I told you you got a story to tell, too, though, man. Like, what's your what's your philosophy for life nowadays? Uh, well, to tell you the truth, I thought that, you know, being locked up for two and a half years and going through all I had went through. There's many times I slept on the streets and stuff when I was a kid. Going through all that, I thought that was the worst time in my life. And I went through a lot of terrible women. Uh, I just had problems all my life. And uh, I thought that was the worst thing that ever happened to me, some of that stuff and the drug addictions and all that. And it wasn't. Uh, I finally got together with a girl i known all my life. And... Uh, we ended up getting married, had a beautiful life. I mean, a beautiful life. We're so happy. We would tease with each other, joke with each other. I kept her laughing every day. So did she with me. We had a great life together. Well, one day I was going to go see my son. Somebody hits me in the ass in my van, totals my van. I love that van. Um, my wife comes to the accident. We go back home. She tells me she's going to the grocery store to... Um, get some stuff for the kids and I uh, should be right back. She knows I'm sore. She's coming back to take care of me. God bless her. Cause she always took good care of me. Um, and she passed away three months after that. My three-year-old basset hound passes away. Not my 13 year old basset hound, but my three-year-old love that girl. Uh, six months after that, me and Debbie's son passed away. So that was the worst thing that ever happened to me. You know, people say, want to tell you about their problems and all this and that. Oh, I can't pay my rent. Uh, 
this or that ain't happening for me. Wham, wham, wham. Cry me a river. Uh, don't come crying to me until you lose someone. Because death is the worst thing about life. The worst thing about life. And it's coming for every single one of us. You know, I'm torn between two worlds right now. I don't want to be here without my wife. You know, I spent all my time with them. She wasn't just my wife. She was my best friend. You know, she was a wonderful woman. Sometimes I think she wasn't, she was an angel. You know, I, I just, yeah. All right, we can go somewhere else now. Right. So, uh, you're dealing with that though, man, you know? I feel like you're doing well with dealing with it one day and you're not doing so well the next, but you got a little support system you're using. It's back and forth. I mean, it's all the time. I go to bed with a wet pillow. I wake up with a wet pillow. As soon as I realize she's not here, it hurts so bad. I've never had pain like this. I've had tons of broken bones, surgeries. I take them all over again to get rid of this pain. That was nothing. That was nothing. You know, like I said, you know, it's coming for everybody and, when you lose someone, you know, all right, for instance, um, one of my best friends, he had passed away, Tony Rhodes, his brother, Timmy Rhodes, right after him. And I sat here and I whined about my problems. Well, there's Tojo, his dad, uh, done lost two wives and his two sons. That's who I go to. You know, you go to people that's mm -hmm. lost people when mm -hmm. you lose people, mm -hmm. you know, to try to understand this, try to figure it out. Because I don't know where she's at right now. I would have to hope and pray that she's in heaven. But I do know this. She don't come to me. I don't see her. I'm alone now. I went from all them phone calls, all the texts, to dinners and food and enjoying each other's company. For 25 to years. To nothing. 25 years. No, I was with Debbie saying, 16. Okay, but still, yeah. okay, 16 years then. Yeah. But that's a long time for you to be... Mm. mixed up in the same everyday grind with someone that you actually enjoy being with that mm. makes your life better, and then they're gone. Oh, she did. Without her, no doubt, I'd been in prison or dead by now, for sure. So let's talk she about drinking. Let's talk about how drinking and, and, and that helps you or doesn't help you. Hmm. All right. Well, I found out the hard way that uh, alcohol is uh, well, antidepressive, you know. Uh, well, it's depressive. <clears throat> I quit drinking because when I drink... I don't know who's, when I, all right, Larry and Earl are two different people, okay? Earl lives inside of me, Debbie, like, if I was going to get in a fight or something, Debbie would be like, come on, put Earl away. Come on, your calm alter, down. Your alter ego, holiday. the one that yeah. kind of takes care of stuff but goes crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, Larry's a nice guy. He'd do anything in the world for you. Earl, kick your teeth out. Okay. You know, uh, but she, um, now you done got me confused. Now I ain't know what I was talking about. Oh, we're Here we go. We're talking about how you turn into Earl probably when you're drinking. Oh, okay. So what it is is I quit drinking because Earl comes out. Okay. I'm mad at the world. Right. You know, I'm mad at everything. Mad at everyone. Not everyone, but, you know, uh, I'm mad. You know, uh, I don't feel like there was no sense in this. This shouldn't have happened. This, you know, but it's because I, it, all right, put it like this. When I drink, it's not the hangover the next day. It's the depression that puts me in for a week, a solid week of nothing but Debbie, Jeffrey, Mimi, and, you know, all my friends. You know, I've lost so many friends, so many friends. It's ridiculous. Hmm. Living long is a blessing and a curse, right? Yes, it is. Absolutely. You know? So The longer you live, the more pain you're going to endure. Right, for sure. I, I want to talk about it too because again to the alcohol thing, man. Because I know you've been a drinker, drug mm -hmm. user, all that stuff, and I feel like you've kind of strayed away from that, especially with the alcohol. Um, but at one point, you're feeling like I just want to go out and get drunk. Like, oh you, yeah, and it's going to happen. Right, it's going to happen. I just hope that you know that I can behave myself, leave Earl tucked away, and uh, have a good time because there is still good times to come. But I don't see that, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's coming, you know. Mm -hmm. I still got some great friends left, some great fr family, family members, and you know, you know, you got to put some things to the side, you know. And uh, I don't know. It, it, it's hard. It's hard. I know it's, I'm going to drink. It's hard again. because I know I'm going right, to drink again. because you feel like it's a celebration in the moment. Yeah. You know, for whatever fun you have yeah, for that two, three, four, you're going to pay for, it, for, sure. pay for it for a for week. It. Yeah. And it's hard to turn that off, isn't it? Even though you it know is. that's how you're going to have to pay, you're still willing to. Didn't know you're gonna drink. Mm-hmm. Makes sure it thing. hard, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It does. 
you know, uh, that's where I have most of my fun when I'm drinking because I'm, you know, cutting up, mm -hmm. having a good time. Mm -hmm. I haven't done that since Debbie and Jeffrey's passing, you know. I miss it, but it's hard to laugh about a lot of things when you got so much on your mind. My mind is so busy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't shut down. I can go to bed five hours before I actually get to sleep. When I get to sleep, it's time to get up, you know. I got too much going on up here. It's crazy. But living long is not always a good thing. You know? Yeah, right. My knees are killing me. My hands are killing me. Yeah. I've watched yeah. a lot of people die. You know, Jamie, I feel like, you know, when we were kids, I could cut, I could get cut. And I had alligator skin then. It was hard to cut me. And that thing would heal up in two days. Now you cut yourself, it's there for the rest of your life. And it's going to haunt you forever. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Getting mm -hmm. old is, you know, it's your not. body changes, man. Yeah, it does. You don't realize it, it when you're young. It does. People are telling you all that shit, and you're like, shut up. Uh, well, you know, and I've now heard we're it bitching, and everybody's telling us to shut up. Right, right. Um, another thing I want to talk about, too, man, is one time you got a hold of a fake fentanyl pill, right? Let's talk yeah, about man. how that happened and, and like how that went down because I feel like that's kind of what I, like a lot of this is based about is the possibility of someone like you that doesn't just hit the streets all the time. It's not out here shooting up, smoking, fitting all that, but you still got a hold of something that almost killed you okay. on a complete accident, right? Absolutely. I'll tell you about that, Jamie. Uh, what happened was I'm sore. You know, I've had a bunch of surgeries, broken bones and shit. So, you know, I was taking a pill here and there and I uh, had bought some pills, me and some friends. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, man, going to work. Yeah, I'm going to feel good today. So I get to the job. Actually, a guy I was working for hired a guy Monday. He didn't show up till that day. This was Thursday. And without him being there, I'd be gone. I wouldn't even be here. So anyway, I uh, got to the job. Guy was there. I was like, shit, I'm just happy he's here. You know? All right. So I, he seen me snort the pill. I had crossed it up, and it crossed up funny. Hmm. And normally I wouldn't do a whole 30. I wouldn't do that. I would do half of it, okay? You know, just enough to get over the pain, not and save the rest for later, but it crunched up differently. And it was on my phone. I needed my phone for music. I was like, I could do it. And I just did it. Went into the house, opened up all the windows, hot day, fell over dead as can be. Woke up at the hospital. Uh, my wife was standing there crying. And I was like, what happened? She said, you OD'd. I said, no way. I don't do them kind of drugs. She said, no, the pill that you had took had fat, core fentanyl mm -hmm. is what they said. It, they marked it as an accidental overdose because I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. If I'd known, I wouldn't have done it. You know what I mean? And I immediately told my wife, you call everybody that bought one of them right now. She said, I already did. Your buddy's in the room beside you. That's all right. No, he, sure. But we all made it. Right. Okay. But here's the thing. I had no idea, mm -hmm. you know, and now I pay attention to it coming out of the bottle, of course, you know, trying not to do them, but you know, monkeys get on your back. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 it's hard, hard when you got a monkey on your back, you know, it's hard out there. Yeah, man. Yeah. And you got, a I want to feel good sometimes. Sorry. You got a lot of shit and you're struggling, bro. And yeah. again, that's what this is all about too. It's about the culture and, 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 yeah. and how it works in our heads. For sure. You know, for sure. But you got a lot going on. I've been yeah. with it. I've been with you through it. You, know, you I mean? know, I've been there for a lot of it and, and not there beside you, but I talk to you. I talk to you enough to know when you're going through it. Right. You kind of cut me off when your son moved in. Fucker. Okay. Sorry. Uh, anyway, I, I wanted to tell you this. I mean, we're good friends mm -hmm. and uh, you've known Dabby, you know me, you know, Jeffrey, you know, my family. And uh, I have respect for, and I, I just want to put this out there. You know, uh, me and Dabby's son, Jeffrey, he was uh, born a uh, type 1 diabetic, him and his sister, C, born type 1 diabetic. Them kids went through seizures, uh, went went through shots every day, all their lives. And Debbie was a, one of the wonderfulest people I've ever met. Instead of going out there doing drugs, running around partying like everybody else was, she stayed home and took care of her kids like a mother's supposed to. She was a real woman, a real mother, great-grandmother. She was awesome. Well... I have respect for like, <clears throat> like Jeffrey, okay? Being sick all the time. All the time he was sick, okay? I take him to the hospital and they're telling me you could take him home and he can pass. And we can send hospice in or <clears throat> you can get him on dialysis. So I tell Jeffrey, Jeffrey's like, I want to go home. I'm like, dead. They ain't doing that. Uh, you have to do it. He said, they're making me do this? I said, mm. yeah. I lied to him. Cause I did not want to lose him. You know, I love this boy. And, um, 
I have great respect for Jeffrey. You know, then he went on dialysis, but I have great respect for him. Here he is sick constantly every day, puke in a bucket, still go to dialysis, still doing what he's supposed to be doing. You know, I have respect for that. I'm proud of that boy, very proud. Him and his sister, are very proud of both of them going through that. Well, then he started losing his eyesight, okay, and having seizures, and it was just a terrible time. I'm the one that found Jeffrey. So, you know, it was terrible, terrible. But anyway, I have great respect for what he done, you know, and what his sister's doing, because you don't give up in this world, you know, just like me. Yeah, I want to be with my wife, but I can't. I can't stop living. I can't, you know, what am I going to do, Jamie? You know, but I got respect for people that, you know, dig their heels in and do something, you know, like they're doing. They're still going to dialysis, still going to the hospital, still getting sick and still get up and do it, you know, instead of doing nothing or right. just giving up. Mm -hmm. They're not giving up, even though they suffer so uh, awful of a loss. And we're pandering to a younger community or a community of people, period, that don't have to do anything. And it just, it's making even the capable people not do anything. So right. these people that aren't even as capable definitely deserve, you know what I mean, recognition, right? Absolutely. But I also wanted to put this out there. Um, Jeffrey, I took him clear to Charlottesville. Finally got papers to take him to Charlottesville to get him a kidney. It wasn't that easy. Everybody says, oh, I'll donate a kidney. It's just not that easy. Mm -hmm. So I go up and I'm hoping I can give mine. And I'm looking forward to sitting back in these recliners getting better together and you know this is my goal debbie uh, debbie's gone now i have him to you know keep my hands busy which you know i was busy with him we spent all our time together they denied him at charlottesville of a kidney because of pain medicine in his system yes they denied him of that because he would buy them off the street and take them he didn't have a prescription for him but he's in pain why ain't y'all giving them to him right you know and because of the the endemic with the, the pills right. and everything, you know, they just, they don't want to give them to everybody. There's some people that need them. Okay. And he was one that needed, them. you know, you seen what he went through, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, you seen it. Even with on his good days, he wasn't good. No, but that was, that was the problem. That's why he didn't get a kidney. 28 years old. Hmm. Comes back to abuse too. Right. Cause when I was a kid, I could have got any oxy I wanted on the planet right. and got them by the hundreds and didn't even have no pain. Right. Um, but that right there is what fucked it up for people like him that really needed it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. Well, to make a long story short, I'm done talking to you, Jamie. Just done. Okay. It's not Larry. It's Earl. Okay. Done with you. <laughs> okay. So Earl just popped in here. We're finished. Yeah. That's it. It's over. It's done. Well, what's your message to everybody though, dude? Like what, what would you want to tell everybody? Like, you know what I mean? If you had a mission statement, this is Larry's mission statement. What is it? Love the one you got. And just remember, tomorrow is not promised to no one. You may not have tomorrow. Love the one you're with. Be nice to everybody. You know, do the best you can. You know? Oh, yeah. Be, ha be as happy as you can because death is coming to everybody and it just gets sadder and sadder. The older you get, the sadder and sadder it gets watching your loved ones disappear. So... Dig your heels in. Yeah, man. Well, I'm glad you finally decided to come by. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to go have some fun after this. It's Apple Blossom. I mean, you yeah, well, should probably do something. I'm going to buy you some cotton candy. What? We yeah. can always walk to the fucking carnival from I'm here. down. Huh? I'm down. I don't know if I'd walk. No, but, we'll walk over to the, we'll drive over to the park and we'll walk from there. Yeah, because we can just park and walk. For real, let's do this. Can't. You want to go do that right yeah, now? Yeah, let's go. We'll go do that. We might go in, re interview the carnies. I wonder if we can talk to the carnies. Man, they, you know they got some killer Bro, I've seen stories. all the trailers and everything back there. Like, I've seen their campers. Yeah. Yeah, you I want to see a Joe Dirt one over there spraying down with the WD-40 on the rig. What? <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. I love it. Uh, I think this started out great, yeah. bro. Uh, I know you didn't want to get too far into all this shit because yeah. I know it goes deep, man. Yeah, you can feel sure. it run deep in a little bit that you talk about, and, and, and you know, it's hard to turn it off. Well, that's why I decided to do this with you. You know me. So. But, yeah, and you're just you, you're fucking grinding through, Larry. Just yeah. keep grinding through, man. It's got to get you, better bro. eventually. I don't know what to tell you to do because I'm nobody. You know I mean, but well, you, you can know, buy me something nice today. You know, you can me call me. You know, you can call me whenever we can go do whatever. Appreciate that. I want to get you on a fucking boat this year, too. You got to get on a boat this year. Promise me right now on camera you're getting on a boat with me this year. If we can take no. it up. Uh, uh, no, listen. Uh, you're asking me to do this, but I'm asking something okay. for you. You know nothing's for free with me. Okay. Uh, if we can take it up Dad's pool first. 
It's right boat? up the road. Yeah. And put, put, it in, the... put it in dance pool. What he shit? I don't have to do that. You know, we yeah. should go by there today and just run his mailbox over when he's in his front yard. We can do that too. Yeah, I'd like to do that. So you want me to leave any links in descriptions or anything like that for you? I'm gonna put your name in a title. So uh, if anybody wants to reach out and talk about Larry or talk to Larry, can they message you or leave you alone? Yeah, just leave me alone. Leave Larry alone. Leave Larry alone. No, they can talk to Larry Earl, don't want nothing to do with him. Right, okay. <laughs> okay. So if you feel like a, a uh Larry's message is hitting you right, man. Again, it's just like I end all these, man. If you want to message any of these people or talk to them, let them know how this affects you. I think that's important. So somebody, you're going to hit somebody's button, bro. Somebody's going to understand. And if they hit you and tell you that they understand, I feel like that's something that is helpful about this process. For real. It, it uh, seems weird sometimes, but I get some great comments. Yeah. Yeah. I just wish I had a better story to tell. Uh, you do. You just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't all bad. Don't kid yourself. I had a wonderful life. If I died today, I'd be, I'd die a happy man. Uh, man, it was so much fun growing up in Winchester. You know, what was nice about having a wife that was, she was 52 years old, same age as me. She was, um, two months older than me. And I used to call her chow. Uh, (laughs) But uh, no, it, it, somebody that had lived in this town as long as you have and remembers the mission store down on the uh, mm-hmm. loud on near the Loudon Street Mall where we used to get them old used toys out of them bins and stuff because we didn't have no money. You mm-hmm. know, we growed up poor, you know, and she growed up poor just like me and remembers everything. The elevators and uh, the stairs and uh, Leggett's downtown, you know, uh, McCoy's downtown, you know, all the stuff that used to be down there. Yeah. Arcade, all the fun when stuff. When the Old Town Mall was actually worth going to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I feel like we should take this out on a rap. Because that rap was awesome earlier. You bro. like that? And I can give uh, you a cool beat. You well, want a beat? Let me give okay, you a beat. let's go with let it. Let me give you a beat. Hold on, let me figure this beat uh, out. <clears throat> I might be a beatboxer. You do what you got to do, and I'll right, do what I got to do. Hold on, hold on. That's not good? That's not good? I didn't like hold it. On, hold on, hold on. Boom. 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 Hey, you're the time talk of the neighborhood, and every time I see you, you're up to no good. You're just like a snake crawling on the ground, looking for some new dirt to spread around. Then you stick out your tongue and start spreading lies, and then somebody else been picked up mice. They stop for a while, then they add it again, and they always got to have the last word in. Call your mouth almighty, oh, talk everlasting. You ain't satisfied unless something's happening. You don't have to be the no more than a minute, but you always got to have your two cents in it. So for all you big mouths, this stands for you, something else. You can run and go tell your crew We made it big, big so we can rock the house But we also made it big enough to fit in your mouth That's what I'm talking about uh, Like, subscribe, and share, man Y'all know what to do Show some love from my man right here Alright, man Let's Later. go have some fun